God knows what he's doing. And even when it seems like things are falling apart, they're actually falling together. God is making things happen for you, even when you don't see it, even when you can't feel it, even when it's not evident. God is working on your prayers. You are where God wants you to be at this very moment. Every experience is part of his divine plan. And Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 to 9 says, The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters. For I am aware of their sufferings. So I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 says, Before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. While the Israelites were crying out to help, God was working through Moses. You might not see it, you might not understand how, but God is at work and he's going to deliver you. Just be still for a moment so you can realize that help is on the way. Because while you are currently worrying, God is already at work. God is working even in your unbelief. And when you are so busy worrying, it's hard to understand that God is at work. Even when you don't see a small hint of improvement in sight, it's hard to believe his promises. God sent an encouraging message to the Israelites because of their discouragement and they could not listen to it. They thought to themselves, oh, we've heard it all before. But here, these trials are still present before us. Now, these same things still happen today. There are so many verses in scriptures that tell us that God is with us. But because of discouragement, we don't believe them. I've had people tell me prayer. I've had people that tell me that prayer doesn't work. And that clearly the spirit of unbelief was talking. The spirit of unbelief was talking in these people. Because it was crystal clear. And now, we have to boldly take hold of the promises of God. So the question is, has your discouragement stopped you from believing that God is at work? Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God knows what he's doing, and oftentimes we go through life questioning why certain things happen in order that they do. But we must remember that we have been given our life just so we can rededicate it back to God. And when we have rededicated our lives back to God, we'll stop worrying and we'll start trusting him in all things. He will never make a move in your life that will not be for your good. Now, sometimes we may not agree with what is going on, but we have to rest in knowing that God will never make a mistake. So be careful trying to do things without consulting him. God knows everything. And he will always reign over all things. God knows what he's doing. But the real question is, are you trusting him to do it? I pray you will continue to surrender all things to him so that he has complete control over every aspect of your life. Now, trusting him will be one of your best choices. Because he said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord of hosts. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts to give you an expected end. I bet we all know people whose lives have been dramatically affected by health issues. Maybe a financial crisis. Maybe a marital or family problem. And I also bet many of you can say that you yourself have gone through some major trials such as these. But the important thing to remember is that in the midst of each and every crisis is that God is in control. Now, my favorite way of putting it is that God knows what he's doing. He really knows and he's not surprised by the events and he's not unsure how he's going to take care of his children. It's easier to put our trust in him when things are going great. We must however remember to think that way when it looks like everything is falling apart. Now Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ. Now he didn't say some of our needs. Notice in both verses we read, and we can underline the word called all. In both verses we read the word all. It doesn't say some. It doesn't say most. But it says that he will meet all our needs. It doesn't say how he will meet our needs. And I found out from experience that the way he does it is often not what we expect. But the bottom line is that we must all cling to the fact that God is faithful. God does what he promises and he does what is best for us. Just hold on a little longer. God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Well, I don't know about you, but I've definitely asked God on many occasions. I've asked him so many times, God, do you know what you're doing? When it comes to my life and his plan for me, I've asked him, God, you sure you know what you're doing? This life is too fragile for, for me to make a mistake, but then I tend to forget. I didn't give myself the life. He gave it to me. He gave me life in this world and he has given me eternal life in Christ Jesus. So who are you to grab the steering wheel of your life? You're not even strong enough to control it. So with the chaos of life going on around me, at times it seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel and it can feel hopeless and it can feel God absent. But it's not until I'm on the other end of those times and then I realize that he was there all along. He was protecting me. He was guiding me. He was working everything for my good and ultimately for his glory. He was working every single thing for his glory. And I love how the message starts off. He says, I know what I'm doing. It's a promise you have to constantly remind yourself of in these challenging seasons. You have to keep lifting your eyes off the circumstances as all-consuming as it may be and focus on the promise because he's there. He won't leave you and he will use it to direct you onto the plans to give you a future and a hope. Now what you're going through now is not where things will end. It's a promise. It's his promise. So today, whatever you face, instead of asking God if he knows what he's doing, just ask him, what is it you want to do? What do you want to do in me? The psalmist writes, once I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. So today, trust that God knows what he's doing. Trust that he has your situation all planned out. The same God that takes care of the lilies, the same God that takes care of the flowers. He said they neither toil nor spin. They neither toil nor spin. So I want you to trust God. I want you to trust God. Trust him even when it doesn't look like it. Trust him when it seems like all hell has broken loose. Trust him when it seems like it doesn't even look good. God is there for you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Just know that God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He knows the beginning and he knows the end. He is the omnipotent God, the God that has all the power. So is anything too hard for him? There's nothing too hard for God to do. There's nothing. If you can trust in this omnipotent God, he will surely come through for you. He has never failed and there is no record of failure in him. So trust God. Trust him and he will never fail you. And as you trust him, you'll come back with a testimony. God bless you.